Hi, I'm Brian Garman, the artistic director and co-founder of Berkshire Opera Festival, and this is Opera Lens, our new online series where we take a look at our upcoming season and at all things BOF. Today we have another twofer, two outstanding artists who have agreed to join me for a chat. Baritone Daniel Belcher will be making his debut with Berkshire Opera Festival this July, while tenor John Risen performed with us in our 2019 concert of American opera excerpts that we presented in collaboration with Hancock Shaker Village. They both will star in our inaugural second stage production of Tom Chapulo's Glory Denied, which, as I've mentioned previously, tells the true story of Colonel Jim Thompson, who was America's longest held prisoner of war. Danny and John will play Colonel Thompson at different points in time, John earlier and Danny later. And I'm so happy that they've taken the time to talk to me today. Welcome, both of you. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you both in person in a matter of days. And we're so thrilled to be returning to live in-person performances this July and indoors. Uh, and of course, our return to the stage will feature the two of you. Uh, last week, I interviewed Caroline Wara and Maria Valdez, who will uh, together be playing your wife, Alice. And we were discussing contemporary opera and the fact that uh, some of our audience might be rather new to it. I know that both of you have tons and tons of experience with modern music. And uh, Danny, I know that you've also premiered a number of roles, meaning that you were the first person ever to learn and perform that music. Since your voice is also the first one we hear in Glory Denied, what might you be able to tell us about this opera that might convince people that this is a piece they should really come and see? Right. Um, contemporary music, uh, it, in my opinion, is kind of our most immediate reflection of who we are in this moment in time. And uh, this is a story uh, that is relatively recent. Um, of course, the Vietnam experience is, is not quite as recent now, 50 years ago, but uh, living with veterans who, who are still living with their war experience is something that continues day in and day out. Uh, and so what Tom has been able to, to achieve, in my opinion, and this is my first time with the role, so John has a lot of experience. I'm coming to it as a complete newbie. Um, I find this wonderful cross between the utilization of melody and also angularity reflecting uh, the inner conflict, the, the, the PTSD, however you want to refer to it, to the war experience and to his memories and to his his, uh, once he has a stroke to these intersections. And so I think the music perfectly sets and uh, illuminates what needs to be expressed. Um, he's not afraid of melody. And so the audience will hear melody. It's, it's not going to be that musical experience where uh, sometimes my wife will explain it as it sounds like silverware being dropped on the floor, um, which I've done some of that music too. And I love that as well. But uh, this is really infused with melody and he uses angularity then to, to be expressive. Yeah, I think you've really hit on to, to something important there. And, and he, he certainly does write so, so well for the voice and always in a way that's uh, appropriate for the dramatic moment. Uh, John, we, we just alluded to this, but you, you might have more experience with this opera than almost anyone around. Is this number six for you, five? It's five, it was supposed to be six, but. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what, what do you think? Why should folks come to this opera? This is one of the coolest stage works I've ever been involved in. Um, just the, the, the way the libretto is set by itself is intriguing enough for people to come. And then you add the added layer of the music. And then of course the people depicting it. I happen to know all the people involved in this production. And it'll be my first time singing with you, Danny, but I know who you are. We've had great talks um, on the phone and things like that. And of course, Maria and, and Caroline are wonderful. Th this is going to be an experience like no other because you're going to watch two different people played by two separate people, <laughs> if that makes sense, four people playing two people, live in this weird timeline going in and out and trading off lines and finishing each other's sentences and having the shame of the future person looking back on the choices they made or the, the younger person looking with hope to something that will never come to fruition. And it's just incredible how, how Tom set up the libretto to work and then the music 
leads you right through it seamlessly. I, I think that's that's important to uh, uh, point out that that Tom Chapula, the composer, has taken this incredibly difficult story and turned it into absolutely outstanding theater. Um, John, we, we see a lot of you in the first half. Uh, we are performing this opera without an intermission. We, we do it all, all in one shot. It's about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, so we see a lot of you as Thompson is undergoing these absolutely hellish nine years in a, in a, Vietnamese, a Vietnamese prison. And Danny, then we, we see more of you in, in the second half uh, as he returns to a country that he doesn't really recognize anymore. So I want to ask a little bit about your process when you're learning a difficult piece like this. There are so many places where the rhythms and pitches are difficult to learn. And I think of Danny, for example, not only the aria you sing about all the things that have changed in the world while you were imprisoned, you know, Teflon cookware, men with long hair, stay pressed shirts, uh, but also the final scene of the opera, which is really a modern mad scene in its way. And it's really hard. So how do you approach a role like this initially? Yeah, um, I started kind of at the source material and lucky, luckily we have this really extraordinary memoir that Tom Philpott wrote uh, uh, discussing this man's experience. So I started, I wanted to hear his voice. And, and in doing so, I, I discovered then as I got into the libretto, a lot of that is really directly uh, coming from, from the book. And so, and, and are his words. So that kind of was one, my first, my first way in. And then two, kind of with everything, I just literally started at the beginning, but I kept being warned by fellow singers, by directors, by conductors, do not hold off on approaching the final aria to the point that even Tom himself would reach out to me and be like, do you want to talk about this last aria? Do you want to talk about this last aria? And I was like, what is it about this last aria? I get it. <laughs> and um, we, we had a meeting, what was it, Brian, about a month ago, six weeks ago. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and Tom literally put it out there. He said, it's never been done perfectly. It will never be done perfectly. Do not expect it to be. It's really this fragmented e expressionistic moment. And you know, as a, as a singer then it's like, I'm not even quite sure how to take that information um, because I'm so obsessive compulsive about details. Um, but now as I'm doing it, it's kind of giving permission that the expressivity has to win, uh, that the reflection of him in the stroke and all these, these fragment, like dard, shards of glass, of ideas, of memories, of, are they all real or some idealized? We're not even quite sure. Um, but uh, you kind of learn it slowly but surely. How about you, John? How, how did you go about uh, uh, preparing this role when you did it for the first time? So the first time I did it was when I did it um, with Des Moines Metro Opera. But I have no idea what a war-torn world looks like. I know what a COVID world looks like, but I can't even fathom what my parents fathomed being roughly my age going through that, uh, going through the Vietnam War and the protests and, you know, not the not support and the support of our troops and the split in our country in that way. And then what was happening over there. Um, I, I, it took a lot of, of watching these documentaries and movies and reading books just for me to wrap my mind around this concept of what that war, that war was. And once that started to sink in and the reality of what the world might've looked like, I started reading the book, just like Danny said. And one of the first lines of the book is something that I directly say, because almost everything that young, young Jim, young Thompson says is a direct quote from the book. Um, and it's, re I, it, it's really powerful to go through the book then. I highlighted each of my lines and I was like, oh my gosh, this is genius how Tom did this. Because some stuff is pontification and some stuff, especially my stuff, is just out of letters and just out of interviews and things that he said. And um, once I got an idea of, of who the person was, I, I took a look at the music because I... Um, I came to music late as a baseball player. And so I have this weird fear, even though it's been 12 years, that, uh, that I'll struggle to learn the music. It's of course not true, but it's still one of those things that, that drives me to <laughs> work really hard on the music. And 
I started to get a feel for for um, the motifs and the things that that Tom did that were really sneaky that he would throw into other people's parts and stuff like that, trying to find um, a, a, a sound world that my character lived in. And it was pretty easy because I'm I'm the tortured one. And then for the second half, I'm pretty much a ghost of myself because I don't exist in your timeline, Danny, once we get to the second act. Once I leave Vietnam after that Everett Alvarez moment, I cease to exist as a person in real time. And I only exist in your memory, not to talk about it for too long, but the biggest thing that impacted me was after my first performance meeting some of the Thompson family, meeting Laura and, uh, you know, some of the other children who came forward and just shared their experience of their father and saying, well, this is what he was like. It was amazing to watch because he wasn't perfect, but he was our dad and our mom too. You know, a lot of people villainize um, the mother and she wasn't a villain. She went through one of the hardest things a person could possibly go through. And that helped me to really like round out who this, this guy is. And I'm excited to bring new life to it because now I get to be the younger version of Danny and we get to develop who we are. And it's going to be such a cool experience because how often do you get to share a person on stage? Right. Yeah. So it sounds like it was significant in your preparation that you're, you're portraying an actual recently living person. And I, I believe uh, that Colonel Thompson died in, in 2002, if I'm not mistaken. So he, he wasn't alive at the time of the premiere of this opera, but, but very recently before that. And Brian, I have to say, that's a really fascinating thing to, to discuss. Um, and that John got to meet some of the family. Uh, it's, it'll be the second time I portrayed somebody who's living, who's lived in our time. Um, uh, and actually it, it's another, another war piece and uh, Afghan Iraq war veteran called The Long Walk uh, by uh, Jeremy Hardbeck and Stephanie Fleischman. And I've become very good friends with this man who I was playing. And in all honesty, you know, in this kind of experience, I've never held a gun outside of a BB gun. I've never experienced war. I've never experienced a day in the life of a military person. Um, but getting to know this person and realize he's a father like me with aspirations for their children, um, with hopes, with dreams, and to, to try and then find this kind of modicum of, of what it must be like to walk in those shoes of feeling that, that crushing blow of um, that kind of experience. Uh, the onus is really high uh, to, to try and tell a story um, and never try to experience what they've experienced, but to be able to tell and share that journey. Well, our time is uh, nearing an end today, I'm afraid. But again, we're, we're so happy that we're going to have you both in the Berkshires this summer. Uh, and I want to thank you again so much for joining us today. I'll see you both in the flesh in a couple of days. Very soon. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And as a reminder to all of you at home, you can learn more about our upcoming season by visiting our website, which is BerkshireOperaFestival.org, or by subscribing to our YouTube channel. I'll see you all on the next episode of Opera Lens.